Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, for nerds, by nerds, hanging out with a couple of special guests today. We have Rudy Rutenberg and Satine Phoenix. We're special? Yeah, absolutely you are. Who told, nobody told us we were special. He just did. Oh, I mean, well, yeah, okay, sorry. Right now. <laughs> I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And uh, today we'll be talking to Rudy and Satine about playing Dungeons and Dragons online and being streamers, professional streamers. And, you know, some of the, the different levels of streaming, I know you guys have been involved with as well. Because, Satine, you've been streaming forever. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy, the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Okay. So you guys, Maze Arcana, D&D Partners. So you want to tell us what's it like to basically be professional streamers? Never sleep, ever, only working, only Dungeons and Dragons, forever. That doesn't sound like a bad thing. Is that pretty good? <laughs> when did you sleep last? I, I got uh, 15 minutes in between our we last We were waiting game for you. So. <laughs> That's true. Nice, excellent. It's actually really fun. We, um, we do a lot of, we talk a lot about all the games that we're playing. Uh, we do a little bit of a writer's room type thing, and it's, it's kind of a dream come true. So there's, I've you know, seen different levels of streaming online now. Like, so you know, there's the Google Hangout streaming that we do. We do you know, recorded games of just the games we play. You know, we play them, we record them, we put them up. Um, you know, you guys have a great production on Maze Arcana, as well as the the D and D partner stuff you guys are doing right now. Which are which are those specific games? Games so people know what to follow you guys on. So uh, we have Maze Arcana every Sunday on our Twitch channel, which is the Maze Arcana Twitch, uh, Twitch channel. And that game is actually specifically called uh, Orphan Neko, and it's kind of has to do with the story stuff. But it, basically everything that we do actually has story logistics behind it and, this, and a purpose. Uh, but we have that one on Sundays. Uh, we used to, on Mondays, have Peanut Gallery, which is very specific to some of our uh, people uh, at Wizards that we play with. And then uh, we have recently uh, started doing the Dungeons and Dragons stream uh, of, for the Stream of Annihilation, which is Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific, and Wednesdays from 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific. And hers is, in t uh, we call yours Team Adventure, but what's the actual title of your? Oh, Freedom of Adventure. Yeah, and mine is the Map to Ruin. Yeah. So she's Team Adventure, I'm Team Ruin. And, and also, before we get into all that, because people always ask us about streaming games online. And I'm like, guys, have you ever even seen our set videos? <laughs> have you seen our setup? Why are you asking us? And so we've even had people tell us, well, I'm doing this. I'm like, wow, that sounds better than what we're doing. Why are you asking me? <laughs> but if, for people who want to know how to stream games, I heard there's going to be a workshop coming up very soon. It's true. So there's so many ways you can stream games. You can stream it on using Zoom or Skype or Google Hangouts. You can do the the box overlays where you're you know, playing that way. We prefer to be playing in a room with our friends. So that's why we designed Maze Arcana that way and at Gen Con. Um, so we are gonna get to be at Gen Con uh, teaching everybody that wants to come how to stream based on the different levels like he's saying. So uh, while we won't be pulling up like Google Hangouts specifically, we'll be showing you what the uh, what it looks like to do it with webcam, uh, how you go about doing that, certain things that are going to stress your computer or melt it, uh, like we've been through and experienced. Uh, and that can be from anything as simple as a 720p kind of uh, camera or all the way up to what we use now, which is our, our 4Ks. Uh, I believe this video right now we're recording at 1080p uh, because... Uh, we didn't want to have to rejigger everything to, to yeah. a, a 4K because that's all of these production things. Like the long, the more complicated stuff that you get, the longer it takes to set it up with less people. We so, actually spend more time doing tech than planning <laughs> for yeah. the game. So, and and we know how daunting it can be. So, if we can truncate that for anybody else that wants to come in and stream, uh, and so we want to show you like one thing that plagues a lot of people is eyeline. Right? And we have that constantly going on where we're trying to figure out, like, okay, so what, how can we make people feel like they're a part of our game without destroying eyeline and having half the people look this way and half the people look this way when they're next to each other? We're still learning. And yeah, and <laughs> you know, we have, 
we have some people that are friends of ours that are professionals that come to help us with some of that stuff that are not professional streamers but are actually professionals in the industry at cinematography. And that's one of the things that I thought was kind of kind of interesting. Uh, I have a little wee bit amount of information and study when it comes to radio, TV, and film being on stage. So like some of this stuff is like, oh, well, I'm used to this and I'm used to that. But to, to go from like our normal production, which is clearly we're not in Ted's basement here. We're in you know, the set from Maze Arcana. And it's a situation where like we're used to having the camera and us and that's it. And you guys have a whole whole team. Oh, we gotta set up the lights and we gotta set up the camera and we're gonna sound check where it's normally it's like, all right, we can see the sound meter moving on the camera. That means we got sound. Okay, we're good to go. Well, I mean that's that's how we started, right? And it's not that much different than doing that. Just so happens that our camera like we upgraded our webcams mm -hmm. to the studio cameras. Right. We upgraded our and this is recently, um, those uh, hardware store lamps uh -huh. to actual production lights. And I'm talking like a month. It's only been a month that we've had these. So little by little, we've been upgrading. But it's, we're sitting in my living room right now. Yeah. You know, um, we are so grateful when someone can come in and help us with switching or uh -huh. the lights. But really, I mean, half the time, it, I would say, you know, a quarter of the time, because we've been very, very lucky lately with our friends coming in to help. But usually it's just Rudy and I. Yeah, and anytime we go to a convention and we stream con from a convention, it's yeah, just, just the two of us, two of us. setting it up yeah. and running through the whole thing. So uh, even when like Bruce will come in, usually uh, at the before we start streaming, he'll pop in for like thirty minutes or so, forty-five minutes, as people are getting here to make sure that we didn't screw something up in the setup. But sometimes we have to break these things down and move them or anything like that. So it really helps to have people that are available with that. But that doesn't mean that you can't do it. It just means that we're typically so busy with the professional side of streaming, which means the business portion of it, uh, that there's not enough time for us to learn all the things that we would normally learn to so be So it took to us a year. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a lot of uh, a lot of what we're we're working on constantly. Well, from from my experience with you guys, when I see you guys at Origins, and I see, actually saw you guys have to unpack everything, set everything up. You guys are like two Tasmanian devils spinning around <laughs> and making making the magic happen. Yeah. So I got to experience that a little bit. What about the difference between uh, playing you know with the camera here and playing your game, as opposed to just you know going to the place and playing a game? And when's the last time you played a game without a camera rolling? I played a game without a camera rolling about a month and a half ago. And that was nice. Sooner. About a month ago. No, even sooner because we did. Uh, we had to play test my Gen Con mod. That's true. So it was like two weeks. Yeah. But outside. Yeah, but of that, that wasn't playing. That was. That was notes. Yeah, yeah, that that doesn't count. We do a lot of, of play testing and troubleshooting. So that's another thing. Yeah. It's like, what, what's it like to play test versus playing a game? Uh, I would say yeah. So you played. Uh, do you want to play the secret game? No, oh, it was okay. a secret game. I like the mysteriousness of it, and it was really cool, and you guys are jealous. You don't even know. It was really amazing. And I got to dungeon master that. I've been dungeon mastering since uh, 2010. Took a couple years off, but it's way different. I mean, even like Savage Nation, like the first episode, I was like, and I've been in front of cameras before, but dungeon mastering in front of a camera, that's different, because right now, if I'm dungeon mastering a game with you guys, I'm sitting next to you, I'm feeling you, right? It's like this. But with cameras around, I have to dungeon master the person over there and over there. And he's, well, you're just good with people anyway. But like, anyway, you, you make it look easy. <laughs> it's <Thank> not. <laughs> uh, I feel like that kind of takes a lot of people by surprise at first, is they're like, oh, how hard could that be? We're just sitting there doing the thing, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, and you guys experienced a little bit last, uh, what was it, yesterday, doing GM tips, where yeah. that's, was that the first time that you guys had been on a set with, like, a bunch of cameras aiming at you? Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, so a situation like that, or, or, like, when you're DMing a group of people here, but you're also talking to somebody out there, uh, the hardest thing to remember is pacing and allowing people to share the spotlight while also stopping people from hogging the spotlight. So you're, that whole job that a DM has of being a referee for a game goes to another level because you're refereeing, a, uh, you're refereeing something that has to remain interesting, not just for the people at the table who can get caught up in the inertia and enjoy that, but some of the people that are out there because uh, we have to be available, uh, or we have to be enjoyable for all the types of gamers because we, we know there's like what? 
three or four different types, mm -hmm. quote unquote. And just like encounters, there's there's crossover. There's hybrids of people mm -hmm. that like, you know, more shopping or more of combat or more espionage. And so we have to be careful to go back and forth between a lot of those things and make sure each character gets their moment in the sun. In the sun. Right. So as streamers running D&D, what has been the biggest challenge outside of tech? Pacing. Pacing? Yeah, and making sure that everybody stays up because you play for yourself and, or your, yourself and your group, I mean. Uh, you know, we could be all sitting there engaged like this and totally listening to each other, but on camera, that looks really bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's easy when you're playing uh, in the Skype world you know, in the little box because everyone just sees your face and nothing else. But when you're in a situation like this where you're, all your body language makes a big difference, it's, that's probably the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. That's true because, you know, I, I do a lot of gaming like that and I just adjust my camera to whatever body position I'm in and it just shows my face pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had, you know, we had a, a friend who really thinks that with today's technology that there's no reason why if you're rolling dice, you shouldn't be rolling the camera. You shouldn't what? be rolling dice on camera? Like, if you're rolling dice, you should, you should be rolling camera. Oh. Record, record everything because there's a market for it. People want to see. What do you guys feel about that? I think it's personal. Yeah, I mean, I still wanted to address the last question that was on there, <laughs> but, uh, but I think that that's a, an interesting thought. Uh, you. You can. It really kind of. Here's the thing: is that as soon as the cameras start start rolling, people are different when they're aware of a camera. So even on Big Brother, right, where which is intended to be a full out reality show where everything is, they still know they're there. They still know they're on mm -hmm. camera, and it's a thing where you'll you know like when we put our group together, uh, it just happened that a lot of us had already had a lot of camera exposure. So you don't have that so much, but then you can even see in the first season when we brought in guests that weren't used to it, like they're just, they change. They're completely different. They don't, they're a lot more rigid. They're so concerned with how uh, people on the outside are gonna view them and, their, and who they are, that that's not, they, they lose track of, like they go so meta that they can't get back into a character. Mm -hmm. And so they're so worried about being a specific way. That to me is a, is a big issue with always having the thing rolling. Now, granted, you get over that, you don't care as much anymore, or uh, you're just not a douchebag, and so then you actually have like a good uh, rapport with everybody that's around you. It's, it's all fine. Uh, but there's, a, there's an exhaustion, I think, that comes to being on all the time. It's something that we've kind of had a little conversation with other streamers uh, hmm. about that you know, may or may not want to show up to do a thing somewhere else because they're like, you know, I can really just use them that are not being on. Yeah, right, right, you know, you energy. have to be you at 11, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And 11, 12. And it's like, what's the purpose? You know, what, what's the purpose of having that camera? Do you just, are you an exhibitionist? Are you and your friends an exhibitionist who wants to share? Are you going to make money off of it? Like, we, we didn't start off making, well, like, <laughs> we don't, we haven't, you know, like, uh, with Wizards, we were very lucky to be a part of their network, but Maze Arcana, we just needed to do the thing. Like, we needed to, and we wanted to share it with everybody. That's why we like. That's the purpose of having the camera on. But we don't film all of the games that we ever play. Yeah, I mean, like we. I guess the kind of the thing was uh, Satine and I met during the uh, season five launch for Storm King's Thunder, and even then, like we had such a good rapport at the table with Chris Lindsay DMing, which you can kind of like see how that plays on the grung that old grung game mm -hmm. from uh, Stream of Annihilation, but. We had such a good rapport there that people were like, oh, you guys should be doing this. This is the thing you should be doing. And I came from a world of playing in Adventures League where people would, I'd be DMing for a table at a con, and people would be like, start to stand around and watch my groups play. And these are just random groups, right? Then there's no cameras on, it's nothing like that. We're just playing. And it's so exciting for people that start watching it and then starting to get, to get comments like, oh, you, you should be doing this. Like, on a, like, I would like to actually watch this. So we had enough comments about, um, oh, I'd really like to see how you could play or this and, is like inspiring. And I've been live streaming my charity game since 2010 right. and it was like, you're fresh blood. Let's do the thing. 
Because, you know, you're fresh and you're excited and, you know, half of us are just, like, So you, like, tired. vampired onto me is what you're saying. Mm. Yeah, that's true, <laughs> dude. I, I, can, I, can, I can feel that now, yeah. I can understand. You I are can young understand and too. fresh. Look at those ties. Look how sharp he dresses. I want a vampire, too. Yeah. Uh, so I was going to answer yeah. the yeah. question that you had earlier about what was the most, what's the hardest thing about, uh, and Satine's absolutely right. That's a very, uh, a very challenging portion. Um, my... I would say that the prep, finding time to do prep, finding time to plan, do stories of Satine and I are lucky if we get a day to do Fury's Reach in the sense of a month or so. So mm -hmm. when we storyboard out, we storyboard for like four to six weeks, and then we have variables that allow us to, to modify things as we go based on what happens with our group, right? And then we'll try and find 30 minutes during the week to be like, okay, so what changed for yours? And I take notes during her games, she takes notes during my games. That way we can compare what we did and didn't hit, how many days our group is behind another group, something mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but for Maze Arcana uh, proper, like for the Orphan Echo, uh, like even today I was somebody, I was like, I don't know where this thing is, I need to find that because I didn't have the time to prep because we're in the middle of Fury's Reach and prepping to go to Gen Con and Game Hole Con and et cetera. So. Well, you also just touched on something that people may or may not know if they're, you know, if they're not checking out your stream. You guys each run a game, right? Mm -hmm. And they kind of like interweave? Yeah, yeah. Totally Isn't that the idea? Yeah. 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 We have two groups going after, they don't know that they're going after the same item or the characters. Unless they know. watch this video. Yeah. <laughs> well, like the players know they're yeah. supposed to, but they don't metagame. So their characters don't know that, they're, that two groups are going after the same item. And they, one will leave something somewhere, and another group will come and find it, not knowing it's them. And it's this fun little back and forth that we have going on there. Right, or a, a merchant will uh, react a specific way to one group because of the way the other group treated him, stuff like that. Uh, those are all very uh, interesting pieces that we can play with. And if, you know, if it, we, we want to make it as close to like an actual TV show as possible. So if there's a scene where... Uh, we could have all the characters in at once. Mm -hmm. If that were something plausible in this space, uh, it would be something that we would try and do. Uh, you know, and we had that same thing going on. We started it, actually, with all of our Maze Arcana brand stuff. So you're looking at the early hello, uh, <laughs> PG. Um, An NPC looking... has joined the party. This yeah. is RPG. Uh, so you're looking at it from the respect where our Orphan Echo campaign started. The peanut gallery started in a different area but they've already had crisscross. And so if you go back and you're an actual, you're an Arcanite who actually watches all of our stuff, even the Savage Nation stuff has been referenced because it's all in Eberron and it's all during one long uh, timeline. Uh, so our characters and our, uh, our audience can have this feeling of a larger living world, which is funny because some people think that I don't, uh, that I didn't, uh, that I don't have a persistent world. They think I cater to the characters, which is uh, really odd. No, you're obsessed. Yeah. <laughs> I can draw you timelines of like how things are going yeah. and all the things in the background that they've let fall through while they went to another place and the, the fallout that's going to happen to that during this next season. So the Maze Arcana stuff is basically all in Eberron. Now, now, someone in one of the Facebook groups had just said, hey, I like everyone. Does anyone else? So I'm like, well, if you do, you should be checking out Maze Arcana because that's all they do. And they collaborate with somebody, right? Isn't there some person you guys well, go to for some... Keith? Yeah, everyone Mr. answers. Mr. Keith Baker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that guy. So Keith, uh, Keith and I created the original uh, setup for the, the campaign because our campaign starts a few years after where, uh, if you've done third or fourth edition, like where that world of Eberron left off. Uh, we, we've moved it forward a couple of years. And it makes it easy to, to extrapolate like what things could have happened or should have happened already. Uh, and then he and I also created a lot of the mechanics or lore updates that would happen. Uh, so, you know, like we have a Warforge and we have a Kalistar and we have Shifters and they all have actually been brought up to 5th edition. Some of that stuff is on our Patreon. Some of it that is super specific is not and it won't be because WotC does not want us to put that up yet. Uh, so we won't. And that's, uh, Keith is great. I was texting with him this morning about uh, the specific type of plate mail that the Goblin Empire uh, specialized in crafting. Yeah. 
It wow. Is, yeah. Imagine, guys, imagine having that in your cell phone. Oh, I need to know what I need in Eberron. Uh, let me, yeah, you know what let sucks? Let me call Keith Baker. That I'm a player, so now Keith and I can't talk about that stuff because it might come out. <laughs> you can talk about so, all you jealous. want. So it's not while, jealous. while you're vampiring off of Rudy, he's stealing Keith Baker. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's a win win. So go, going to the whole stream access, uh, the, or technically going back to what I, what I had brought up about, you know, rolling dice, rolling camera is there's, there's a number of advantages and disadvantages. And you talked about the disadvantages of you know, someone feeling like they, they can't dial it down or they can't just have a relaxed play or they feel like they need to step things up because the, character, the, the camera is on. On the other side, like the, you know, the options are, well, if something happens in a game, and you actually have the time, and it's recorded somewhere, you can actually go look at it and be like, okay, what was that NPC? Or as a, as a DM, you know, I did this voice. What did that sound like? I've watched every episode of Fury's Reach like five times. Because, <laughs> I mean, I, you're not going to take as good of notes as you recording yourself. For better or worse, it's recorded, and you can always go back, which right. is, as, you know, definitely has advantages. Yeah. Yeah, so, so recording something like that for notes is fantastic. I use, well, we use uh, Campaign Logger when we can, but uh, we're not always, like, when you want to be engaged, again, pacing is a big thing, right? So when you stop and you're like, okay, hold on, for like, you know, 20, 30 seconds, whatever it takes for you to formulate that, and the more tired you are, it takes longer. Mm -hmm. So you can't, uh, you can't take as good a notes, and you have to keep moving, so uh, my players have started to get good now where they recognize when I'm doing something like that. Uh, like if something's super important and they'll... Do they cover for you? They, well, they, start, they take that moment to like have like a role play moment mm -hmm. or to, to, to go over strategy for something or doing whatever they, they need to do that is maintenance and upkeep, but that is still something that would be driving the story forward. Uh, so the, uh, that portion of having it recording, yeah, if that's your purpose is for the record of it, yes. So like you could actually have it recorded and, you know, if you don't actually have a way or care to actually put it up, you can record it, have it for your own reference. Mm -hmm. And if you ever feel that you wanted to do something with it, you could. Audio. Audio. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Most the podcast situations are going to be, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, I would say that those NPC moments are pretty good to do. But I can also tell you from having to go back and watch things that not having the notes, like even if they're like scribble quicks of the notes that you need to know which episode you're looking for, to know which that, thing it mm. was, uh, like, because you're talking three to four hour sessions, right? Yes. So campaign that's a logger. lot of scrub time. Mm. Campaign logger. So campaign logger works really well. It's There's amazing. Realms works. Uh, I know that Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds uh, also have their own kind of innate thing. There's Obsidian Portal. Yep. Uh, there's a, a, a myriad of different ways to do it. Uh, but pen and paper? Yeah, pen and paper is the easiest for sure. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people yeah. use OneNote, right? Yeah. But uh, the cool thing about uh, Campaign Logger for us is that it, it does links. So I can have everything I need about a character and which episodes they appeared in and what their, where they came from, their backstory, what their motivations are and what the things are going, what they're uh, looking to do and have all of that to where I just have to click on it and it'll give me all of them. And that's a lot easier, excuse me, that's a lot easier than having to back up and uh, hold on guys, I have to go through my notebook, which is what I had to do today for a thing, was wow. spend like we took a break, and the whole break, I'm just doing this, scribbling a note, moving it to the next thing, scribbling a note. I find that, you know, when I'm streaming, you know, one of my games, I generally, you know, I take notes by hand just because it's, there's less of a break. Like you said, if you have to, you know, type something out or whatever, I can write notes and kind of talk at the same time and keep things moving. Right. But then, again, you have to go back and put, put that someplace later on, yeah. which someday I will do. <laughs> my, my problem is I'm not super organized. So I actually have, in the, in the game that I'm running now, which has been going on for more than three years, it's in snippets in many different notebooks. Mm -hmm. And I literally, I had to tear my place apart because one of the characters talked to me out of game, like, hey, just to let you know, I'm thinking about doing this. Ted, that might be a little bit scary if the characters are talking to you out of game. <laughs> the player is talking to me 
that his character <laughs> wants to do this at some point in time. And I'm like, I need more information on that. I had to go find my, my notes. I actually was like, all right. I actually sent a couple people to like, hey, look, can you go find out mm -hmm. what video this is? Because uh -huh. I can't find my notes. I eventually did find them. And I haven't gotten to that spot yet. But I'm like, it was, it was rough because it was from like the first couple sessions. I'm like, I don't know where that notebook is. It well, was three years ago. That's one of the nice things about streaming online is you get lots and lots of minions. And some of them are willing to do that for you. If you're like, hey, can you find this thing? <laughs> you know, because they, they they're vested. Yeah, yeah. No. They have actual help. I've heard, yeah. Which well, we've, is been, we've, been, yeah. we've been working on that, that help for like the past four years. So yeah, that's it. You they have to build it up years. a little bit. You know, it's a trust factor. We, and we have a couple of, we have a historian uh, right now. We do. Like, and we're expanding kind of what her role is and things. Because right now she's mostly been doing uh, di uh, the, the die rolls, like logging those. But she's started to note when specific characters that are named NPCs that are important are showing up and what they're doing. Uh, but yeah, like that's, I mean, Critical Role has so many people that are just like, yeah, we, we don't, I mean, it's like, not even, we can't even compare. No. What we do is, Nobody is can. totally Nobody different. Can. Really, no. Yeah, and, and that's the thing is each, one of, these, camera action is each one of these streams are so different. Yep. And that's why we watch each one of them is because they give a totally different experience one of the things that's really important if you're live streaming is, you know, and we don't do this all the time, but you got to be organized and keeping notes and putting those notes together and organizing right after you stream, because that's when it's going to be fresh. We've done it like once. And it's also when you're <laughs> tired, though, you know, because a lot of work goes in the pre yeah. and there's actually some things that have to be done afterwards. And then you then you'd have to go back yeah. and do that. But at but, least like that or the next day, because... I mean, that is how you'll have a successful campaign. Uh, to, to what you're saying about the different levels, like, you know, you have lights, uh, what is it, lights, uh, what, is, what is Parkin's game? Dice camera action. Dice camera action, critical role, maze arcana. Like, they all have their own different, you know, production value levels. Even the saver dice uh, game we're about to start is, is different. And it's kind of cool to see how everyone does it. Um, Encounter role play, if you watch their stuff, they do it differently. And their, their games are very, like, Hunger Games-ish. Matter of fact, the C team, I think they kind of hand it off their, the way they do things to the C team with, uh, with the um, chat interactions. Yeah, there's, you know, uh, we were on the gauntlet and that was just all chat interaction. I mean, the chat was donating money to, to give us, us traps. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's like, that's one way to do it. Uh, we don't, we like to show people, we want you to be watching our us game at home. So uh, our interactions are either on our break, before or after. We have our friends on uh, talking in the chat rooms. But it's not, we're not pandering to get people to affect the game. Right. We are providing entertainment um, that we would do anyway. <laughs> right. And one of the things that's really important to us about that scenario is that we, uh, like she said, we don't, we're not trying to get other people to come uh, to send us money and stuff like that, which God would help, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, we want to be a good representation of what Dungeons and Dragons actually is. If you go, you know, like if you go into a store and you're going to play for the first time, or if you're you're joining a new group, we don't want to give somebody a situation where they come in and they think that uh, these anybody that's like, I don't know, overacting for things mm -hmm. or like being um, ingenuine or Ingenuous with their character, disingenuous yeah. with their character. So tired. Uh, disingenuous with their character is the way that uh, you know is what they should strive to do. Or and that's the same reason I'm so specific with. Uh, we're not rule Nazis, but we're. Ve I'm very specific about when we're departing from the rules and the why of that specific thing, and it, to make allowances at, at any point. But also one of the things that a lot of people are really enjoy about our stream is that you know we're an Eberron. And it feels like Eberron, and we make it Eberron, and we keep the whole thing going in that scenario. So we keep the idea of uh, the like the holiness of the Grail mm -hmm. intact as best we can. We're not trying to depart it, make it our own setting, and all that. So we're keeping a uh, a log of all the things that should be there, and not trying not to break the game. Now I enjoy that, but at the same time, 
because D and D is now entertainment, it has changed forever. You like you can't go back, right? Sure. The genie is out of the bottle. So these other things are kind of happening, and I almost see like that Hunger Games style game as being an extension of some people just like really random stuff in the game, and they like you know critical fumbles and. Uh, you know, critical hit tables, and mm -hmm. they, and some you know, there's some people that like it when really bad things happen to their characters. And there's there's lots of streams that you can watch that on. And, yeah, and yeah, some of those people actually, wrong with them. and some of those people actually want, you know, who are watching, they want to see the bad things happen to them, not to themselves. They want to see it happen to the characters. Because, oh, and don't get us wrong, we will ask for money uh, in December for the charity game, which is how people can affect the characters that are in our games. Right. We, there's a place that's for charity. There's now. a place for that yes. for us. And yeah. and we yeah. And that's just and it's, there's nothing it's not better or worse. It just is a different way. And, and that's what I'm saying. The space is forever yeah. changed and there's going to be different ways to enjoy it. And that way is not wrong and your way is not wrong. Right. Just like Well, and we're all about having critical yeah. fails and critical successes and whatnot, but we're not we're not willing to at least not in our own home game have a thing where you can automatically make Satine critical fail. She rolls ones and up on her own. That's true. I that don't want true. somebody to donate $25 and drop a trap that interferes with the story and the journey that I'm taking them on. So I'm not looking for that kind of a, uh, a situation. Now, will we have other streams where we can play with something like that? May there be some sort of uh, battle royale system in the future where we have like a uh, Hunger Games style thing? Sure, maybe. Uh, but for this specific game, I think Maze Arcana's Orphan Echo will probably stay uh, as it is now well, because it's, it is a representation it, of what you're going to expect. It comes back to what Naruki has always said, right? And that is enjoy the game the way you want to enjoy it. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, we put out maybe, like, our specific brand of D&D &D or gaming, but we tell everyone at the end of the day, it's your game. Do, mm -hmm. do what you want with it. Make it your own. But speaking of the crits, uh, I just came from that fan game, and I had a fan roll a crit like four four rounds in a row. Oh my crit god! It. The last round, double crit. Loaded. Oh, oh <laughs> my god! That's because amazing. Kyle was here, so I know that that was nobody else's doing. Right? No, uh, but, uh, he, how how about this? I was I was running, and we had, we actually ran two separate fan games right. uh, simultaneously. Because that's what you do when you're in LA. <laughs> uh, and I had I had four monsters attacking four players. And I dropped one of them was a one. The other three dice, natural 20s. Wow. Rolled, it right, rolled it right in front of the players. It's like, all right, crit on you, miss on you, crit on you, crit oh, on you. Oh, man. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> that I, happens from time I, to time. I, yeah. I, I, I've never seen, like even, like, even when I'm rolling well, I've never seen that. Yeah, I've never uh, seen that. That's amazing. utterly, utterly incredible. Yeah. Uh, I do have one, one question that's a two-parter you know, for, for both of you. What is your favorite thing about gaming offline, and what is your favorite thing about streaming? Ooh, 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 I got this. Well, the first one, gaming offline, is I can eat a lot of food. I just love eating and gaming. <laughs> it's pretty much like trough of food and dice. And paper, and then my friends. Well, like, social that's gatherings, like. that's what you do. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if you watch I Hit It With My Axe, it's just like, we. you can kind of see our character sheets amongst all the food. And it's like <laughs> the only time I ever had junk food, so that's what I like. So, I don't know what the other question is, but that was the only one that stood out to me. So <laughs> the, other, the other question is, what do you like best about streaming? No, you get to go Rudy? both you of these. Rudy? Yeah. Uh, I thought you were saying, like, Rudy best oh. about streaming. <laughs> <laughs> Must be his fancy ties. It's the fancy it, ties. It is the fancy ties. Um, best thing about streaming is I get to meet amazing people. Like, look at, like, like if we didn't do that, I wouldn't have been like, I would just be the girl that's watching all of your stuff. Now I'm like, hey, come over, come stay with me. <laughs> Want to stay for it with me for a weekend? Want to do some GM tips? Like, the peers yeah. are, are amazing. The people that are watching that, like, like our chat room has turned into just our friend hangout because we would restream and then we would just sit in the chat um, room talking with everybody. We've made so many friends. That's like the best part of streaming. Right I, there. I can totally concur with that. Uh, you know, having come from a hangout where 15 of our fans traveled from everywhere from like minutes away to like up to six hours away <gasps> what? just, yeah. just yes. to hang out with us. And like they were super ecstatic about it. And I was just as excited to get to meet them. It was a little bit crazier because the one person, they came out Thursday thinking that they're like, oh, they're going to be there Friday or Sunday. 
And that was when they came six hours. It was like, and they got, so they came and got a room and like. So this is actually a two part answer because the, the truth is, is I'm an artist. I love making things. And every single week, my, my closest friends come over and we make Maze Arcana. Yep. Like, this is great. I yep. mean, he sleeps, you know, but yeah, my, our other friends. <laughs> So what about you, sir? You're like half asleep, that's what I'm saying. What, what, like, qu questions are to you now. Uh, so my favorite thing about gaming off, uh, offline, I don't know, usually I get more sleep in between them. I don't know what the... Uh, yeah, it's pretty much, yeah. So, uh, oh, I guess probably my favorite thing about that is we're usually playtesting something. So I get to see, like, I, I love the bits and pieces and the mechanics and moving things around and, and designing and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm also a storyteller by trade as far as writing goes. And I really like to be able to interweave, interweave those, but when we're off stream, I get more time to create her class stuff or, you know, like anything. Like, uh, I love playing so, with So, the more prep time. It's more prep, but it's also like I get to explore where my mind wants to go. And when we're streaming, I don't necessarily get that. I get to explore what exactly is in front of us right now, and then is anything that's in front of us going to echo back to something else that I need to go and research? And then my favorite thing about streaming is probably the, uh, the challenge of making the art, but also the connectivity that we have to the community. Like she's saying, she's talking about all the people that we're getting. I like kind of the other side of that, where they're sending us, like... Here's your, uh, like, oh, I, I, I wrote this thing. Like, you know, uh, what do you think about this? Or, uh, oh, like, uh, check out my, um, and people are good about this so far. Like, nobody's being, like, you know, a jerk about, like, oh, where's, did you read this already? But, like, we'll all start getting submissions for, like, things of uh, new read, druids for the Elden Reaches. Read my adventure. Read my subclass. Yeah, and, and I, like... I'm I, guess I'm, I got some emails to forward you. Yeah. <laughs> a couple dozen. I'm a, I'm a big advice person, so when people have started asking me now, like, well, what should I do about this situation or what should I do about that situation, I like helping. So if I can, if I can help somebody through a challenging situation that they may have with a player or if they're having disagreements with their DM, um, I feel like I'm a very... Uh, I'm an arbiter, like I'm a judge, so my judging is very much like as objective as I can make it. And if, okay, well, so tell me, what are the things here? And if you sugarcoat anything, I'll know. So we can, the only way I can help you enjoy your gaming better is if you can be honest with what's going on. And so I've started having people write in about that, but then also getting to do like stuff on the DMG, like for the Adept Guild that's coming up, or writing for conventions, or writing for uh, Wizards of the Coast. Yeah, that's proper. pretty amazing. I can't believe we get to do that. Right? And so we both have a module coming out for season seven, and I got to rewrite Gary Gygax's Tome of Horrors uh, poem. Um. Yeah, I didn't rewrite the whole thing. Uh, <laughs> nobody wants to do that. That's a, that's a feat. But that's, that's some really fun stuff that I didn't have the opportunity to do before while I was just screenwriting. Now, we can kind of relate to that because we actually started a segment basically based off of that where we do our GM 911s and people send in their questions. And then we, you know, we take whatever information we have and try and answer it to the best of our ability. Well, we, should, we always try to go for multiple options. Yep. Because like sometimes you don't have all the information, and sometimes like one answer just isn't enough. Because what happens if a piece of the information that they didn't provide precludes your advice? Yep. Well, now what? So mm -hmm. we try to we try to give multiple multiple options so that the number one, that that situation. Number two, what if the players of said game are watching as well. Right. So oh, yeah. like we do it as a video response rather than, you know, emails. So this way you've got people who can watch, see what's going on. We let the person know, hey, we recorded the video on this, you know, be on the lookout for it. It's gonna go up this week. Right. Plus you always figure if one person has that question, so do ten other. Right. Yeah. So you might you know might as well put it out there and then they can research it for themselves. So we're running a little bit long. Uh, let's go with some final thoughts from the two of you, and then uh, you can tell them where to find you again. Uh, well, I've been really happy with getting able to, uh, with being able to spend more time in the community, and uh, having Satine doing GM tips uh, has given us kind of a little bit better platform as well. And we've had more con conversations now with the uh, the 
the general population of gaming, uh, almost all RPGs, etc., uh, that I really like. So, like, you guys feel free to reach out to us, to have a conversation with us. You can leave things to us uh, on our website or over Twitter. Uh, mine's uh, uh, hashtag Ask Satine for GM Tips. Right. And, uh, and that's at Satine Phoenix. And then mine is at Rudy Woot. And that's pretty much across the things, but MazeArcana.com will get you there. Uh, also, any of the YouTube videos that we put up that are basically just our older sessions, you're welcome to comment on those uh, while they're still up. Yeah, because we're taking them down. That, right, that but was, Twitch is yeah. the best place probably to come hang out with us on a regular basis, and we're thinking about doing some additional things where we do just have you know conversation yeah. with you guys about some of those specific things. Yeah, and if you haven't seen Maze Arcana, uh, we start season three, which is basically a new um, a new beginning for us next week. So, uh, yeah, feel free to just jump in. You don't really need to uh, catch up. Wow, it's watch nice, the whole thing. But you don't have to, and that's what we really like. Yeah, watch it now. Catch up or watch it now. Fall in love with us. Go back, watch it. It's kind of like I did with Buffy season two and then went back to season one. Right, so that'll be August. <laughs> that'll be the first Sunday in August will be our beginning of uh, the new kind of stuff for Orphan Echo. So like she said, you don't have to have watched everything before that, but it's a good place for you to start because we're going to basically start with new kind of introductions, I guess, with people yeah. uh, back and forth. Uh, so it'll be a good place... Uh, that you don't necessarily need to have seen everything behind that. And, any, and even if you do decide you want to, it'll be available for, you know, a bit. So uh, Sundays, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time at twitch.tv slash mazerarcana. Mondays, twitch.tv slash mazerarcana to watch our friend Bruce and his game. Anna Sedora, they are actually building their uh, the game through the 12-week episodes. And then Tuesday, Wednesday... By, by game, they actually mean the... A rule set. It's not yeah, rule set, yes. Right. So, actual... uh, as we were talking about, one of my favorite thing is to be able to do this kind of mechanic stuff. They're actually going to be doing it on stream, playing through, making the adjustments, bringing them back, and talking about them the next week. So uh, Satine was saying, and it's Fedora, uh, 7 o'clock or 7.30 on Monday, and then go ahead with the rest uh, of it. Tuesday and Wednesday, I'm Dungeon Mastering on Tuesday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Rudy's Dungeon Mastering Wednesday, Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m., both on twitch.tv slash dnd and then thursday well that's geek and sundry day essentially <laughs> at this point we've got dread that comes out on thursdays gm tips comes out on thursdays on youtube and then yeah all you know um if you guys would like to come learn how to stream we will be at gen con on the 11 a.m slot from 11 to 2 uh playing with uh, some of these fine people and some other really good friends of ours from uh, different streams or YouTube, playing some D&D in Eberron in a module that I wrote way back when. And then uh, we'll be teaching you guys how to stream directly after that. And on the Saturday, we'll be having two workshops uh, during the morning and the afternoon. So if you just go to the Gen Con website and you search for Maze Arcana, You'll be able to sign up uh, for those games and then come see us at Gen Con where we play with other celebrities. And <laughs> yeah, cool. Down in the description, I will put the links to all of those places so you guys can check them out. But while you're down there, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. You can hang out with us over on nerdhockey.com. So until next time, stay, stay nerdy. nerdy. So that's why we designed Maze Arcana that way and at Gen Con. Um, so we are going to get to be at Gen Con uh, teaching everybody that wants to come how to stream based on the different levels like he's saying. So uh, while we won't be pulling up like Google Hangouts specifically, we'll be showing you what, the, uh, what it looks like to do it with a webcam. Uh, how you go about doing that, certain things that are going to stress your computer or melt it, mm. uh, like we've been through and experienced. Uh, and that can be from anything as simple as a 720p kind of uh, camera or all the way up to what we use now, which is our, our 4Ks. Uh, I believe this video right now we're recording at 1080p uh, because uh, we didn't want to have to rejigger everything to do yeah. a 4K. <laughs> Because that's all of these production things, like the long, the more complicated stuff that you get, the longer it takes to set it up 
with less people. We so, actually spend more time doing tech than planning. I, I got uh, 15 minutes in between our we last We were waiting game for you. So. That's <laughs> true. Nice, excellent. It's actually really fun. We, um, we do a lot of, we talk a lot about all the games that we're playing. Uh, we do a little bit of a writer's room type thing, and it's, it's kind of a dream come true. So there's, I've you know, seen different levels of streaming online now. Like, so, you know, there's the Google Hangout streaming that we do. We do, you know, recorded games of just the games we play. You know, we play them, we record them, we put them up. Um, you know, you guys have a great production on Maze Arcana, as well as the, the D&D partner stuff you guys are doing right now. Which are, which are those specific games, games so people know what to follow you guys on? So uh, we have Maze Arcana every Sunday on our Twitch channel, which is the Maze Arcana Twitch, uh, Twitch channel. And that game is actually specifically called uh, Orphan Echo, and it's kind of has to do with the story stuff. But it, basically everything that we do actually has story logistics behind it and, this, and a purpose. Uh, but we have that one on Sundays. Uh, we used to, on Mondays, have Peanut Gallery, which is very specific to some of our uh, people uh, at Wizards that we play with. And then uh, we have recently uh, started doing the Dungeons and Dragons stream uh, of for the Stream of Annihilation, which is Tuesdays from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. Pacific, and Wednesdays from 7 to 10 p.m. Pacific. And hers is in t uh, we call yours Team Adventure, but what's the actual title of your? Oh, Freedom of Adventure. Yeah, and mine is the Map to Ruin. Yeah. So she's Team Adventure, I'm Team Ruin. And, and also, before we get into all that, because people always ask us about streaming guy games online. And I'm like, guys, have you ever even seen our set videos? <laughs> have you seen our setup? Why are you asking us? And so we've even had people tell us, well, I'm doing this. I'm like, wow, that sounds better than what we're doing. Why are you asking me? <laughs> but if for people who want to know how to stream games, I heard there's going to be a workshop coming up very soon. It's true. So there's so many ways you can stream games. You can stream it on using Zoom or Skype or Google Hangouts. You can do the... The box overlays where you're, you know, playing that way. We prefer to be playing. Hey guys, Dave from Nerdarchy, four nerds, by nerds, hanging out with a couple of special guests today. We have Rudy Rutenberg and Satine Phoenix. We're special. Aww. Absolutely, you are. Who told, nobody told us we were special. He just did. Oh, I mean, well, yeah, okay. Sorry. Right now. <laughs> I'm Nerdarchist Ted. And uh, today we'll be talking to Rudy and Satine about playing Dungeons and Dragons online and being streamers, professional streamers, and you know some of the, the different levels of streaming. I know you guys have been involved with as well. Because Satine, you've been streaming forever. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with Nerdarchy. Okay. So you guys, Maze Arcana, d d Partners. So you want to tell us what's it like to basically be professional streamers? Never sleep, ever. <laughs> only working, only Dungeons and Dragons, forever. That doesn't sound like a bad thing. It's what more do you need? <laughs> when did you sleep last? <laughs> yeah. For the game. So, and, and we know how daunting it can be. So if we can truncate that for anybody else that wants to come in and stream, uh, and so we want to show you, like, one thing that plagues a lot of people is eyeline, right? And we have that constantly going on where we're trying to figure out, like, okay, so what, how can we make people feel like they're a part of our game without destroying eyeline and having half the people look this way and half the people look this way when they're next to each other? We're still learning. And, yeah, and, you know, we have, we have some people that are friends of ours that are professionals that come to help us with some of that stuff that are not professional streamers but are actually professionals in the industry at cinematography. And that's one of the things that I thought was kind of kind of interesting. Uh, I have a little wee bit amount of information and study when it comes to radio, TV, and film, being on stage. So like some of this stuff is like, oh, well, I'm used to this and I'm used to that. But to, to go from like our normal production, which is clearly we're not in Ted's basement here. We're in you know, the set from Maze Arcana. And it's a situation where like we're used to having the camera and us and that's it. 